Hi, thanks for coming along for this video. Um, the idea of this channel is to give you guys better advice on university in the UK, what it's like to study different subjects, and just in general, you know, more advice when it comes to jobs and internships in the UK. And with more and more people wanting to figure out how to do these, I thought this channel would be a nice way to give you guys a lot of advice. So to start it all off, I wanted to talk about the university where I studied and the subject that I did. So in this video, I'd like to give you a good idea of what it's like to study computer science at UCL. And especially, I'll go into more detail in other videos about you know some really specific stuff that I have to say about this. But the whole point of this video is just to give you a general kind of overview as to you know, what it's like to study computer science at UCL and some of the really common questions I get all the time. So let's start with some of the generic stuff. So where is the location? So UCL is located in Bloomsbury and two of the closest tube stops to that are probably Euston Square, Euston and King's Cross. It's literally a two minute walk from Euston and like about you know, five to ten minute walk from Euston and King's Cross. So um, there's plenty to do around the area as well. So you know, you've got Oxford Street nearby, Chinatown nearby, you've got Covent Garden, Region 3, like all the different kinds of stuff that you've got there. And to be honest, I could do a whole separate video on what it's like to live in London and to be fair, you get all the different benefits of being in London as a London University at UCL. So it's great. UCL, in terms of location, has one of the best locations right in the heart of London. So in terms of ranking for the university as a whole, UCL comes at 10th in the world according to QS rankings. But for computer science, it ranks at 23rd, which is really, really good as well. So that's just, you know, for you guys out there who like your numbers and your league tables and whatnot. But that stuff shouldn't matter too much. To be honest, all these universities are pretty good. So in terms of the fees, it's pretty much standard for most um, London universities. So the fees at the moment for 2019-2020, it's £9,250 for home students and an eye-watering 29 k for international students. So that's just how it is. And yeah, it's pretty expensive if you're coming here to study from abroad. Um, in terms of student satisfaction, student satisfaction at UCL is particularly low. I know a lot of people who have come to UCL before have like, taken a look at the, you know, the different tables and what people have said about satisfaction. And you know, all the different universities might be here and then it's literally just UCL, you see it's all the way down here. So a lot of people tend to ask, you know, does it really matter? I used to think before I went to UCL, maybe people are being too picky. I don't know why it's so low and I kind of just like put it on the side. But when I went to UCL, um, especially for the computer science department, where normally I wouldn't say look at student satisfaction too carefully, um, it's pretty accurate. Like the low student satisfaction is fairly unanimous across the board at UCL for computer science. And there are many, many reasons for that, but that will be its own separate video. So moving on, um, what were class sizes like? So when I was starting my first year at UCL, class sizes were about, it started around 200 odd. So that was a lot more than we expected. We normally expected about 150 people, but for my year it starts at 200 um, people. And year on year, whether it's through people changing subjects, people failing exams, you know, just generally how you lose people, we lost about 25% or maybe 20% of students we had. So each year, literally, class sizes would decrease by a quarter until we reached master's years. So that's just to give you an idea of, you know, it is a tough course and that's just how we saw the numbers go down. Um, in terms of um, space, because we had 200 students, I don't think UCL was prepared to be able to easily put these guys in lecture room. So there were lectures where we had people sitting on the stairs, there were lectures where, you know, it was overcrowded and you, you came and you didn't get a seat. But, you know, that's usually at the beginning as lectures go by and fewer students naturally come to lectures, then you can find space. But yeah, at the beginning, it was a little bit of a problem. Um, also, as usual, you have two options in UCL. Actually, there's a few different ones, but the main ones, you can do a BSc or you can do an MEng. And you also have a year abroad that you can do, I think. You can do that either as your BSc or your MEng. And usually as your second year, you can do it in a various, um, various different locations. You can do it in Caltech, um, you can do it in Singapore, it just depends what university you get. Um, apart from that, um, at UCL we have a lot of private tutors assigned to you, so sorry, these are known as personal tutors. And at the beginning of your time at UCL, you'll be assigned your own personal tutor. And this is a guy who's responsible for you from the beginning of your course all the way to the end of your three or four years, however long you're there, of every little aspect, things you're not sure about, things you want to know, career advice, you know, you just want to have a chat, whatever, but he's the guy responsible for you usually. Um, normally with these tutors, it can be hit or miss because there are some people I know who have never seen the face of their tutor over the four years, and there are some tutors who, like my own tutor, I'd see every single week. And to be honest, 
I think he was one of the most important people I met at UCL in my time. So what I would suggest is to really find out who is a good tutor before you find out I mean, when you apply for getting a tutor, because sometimes you do it randomly, but you can ask for a specific tutor, and that can make a whole lot of difference to your time there. Um, apart from that, there are plenty of societies you can join. So we have UCL Technology Society, we have UCL Data Science Society, we have Entrepreneur Society. And to be honest, at UCL, there's so many different societies that anything you can think of is probably a society for that. So you will never be short of anything. If you're an entrepreneur, you've got that covered. If you like your technology, there's something going on every single week. So yeah, societies are one of the great parts of UCL. You can go along and have a try and see what that's like. So now let's move on more into the subjects at UCL, more about you know what the course itself is like and the specifics of what I had to do in my few years. So in terms of your modules, you'll be sitting eight modules every year throughout your three or four years at UCL. And it's a good mix of you know different kinds of elements. So working in industry, group projects, um, a good mix of practical and theory elements, so on paper it's pretty nice because you know you get to do a whole range of things. I think there's very few places or few courses where you get to actually work with a partner in industry to you know develop your kind of app development skills or programming skills or whatever it is. So that aspect of it's quite nice. But yeah, on paper it sounds great, but in reality some of the execution isn't the best, but more on that later. So some examples of the subjects that we do is in the first year, you'll find that a lot of the, all, all of the subjects are compulsory subjects. So the kinds of things you learn are algorithms, where you do a lot of the theory behind the algorithms and coding them up, compilers, um, design and professional practice, which is an engineering based subject, teaching you about you know, how to be a good engineer and some of the more practical elements to being an engineer. So yeah, apart from that, we've got discrete mathematics, integrated engineering, um, object-oriented programming where you get to learn stuff like Java and you know just a basic introduction to that. You've got principles of programming where you will learn some functional elements such as Haskell and some of the more important stuff like learning how to code in Python or C. And finally you've got theory of computation which is as the name suggests a purely theoretical subject. So that's your first year. In your second year we've got computer architecture and concurrency. We've got logic and database theory mathematics and statistics, security, software engineering, and systems engineering. So apart from this, we do have the options to do some IP modules, but you get two IP modules, and what this is, are, or these are our subjects where you can choose from a bunch of different things, like languages, you might want to do finance, so this gives you a little bit more leeway in terms of your subject selection, and this is usually for two subjects, and these are known as IP minor modules. So in your second year, you've got six of your basic subjects that you have to do, and then two IEP modules, which I'll put a, um, just some description here of what those um, subjects are. And finally, for your third year, you've got a lot more choice to specialize. So there's only three compulsory um, subjects this time. You've got computer systems, which I found to be one of the hardest modules during my time. Pretty well taught, but definitely took a very long time. You've got computability and complexity theory, and you also have an individual project unless you're doing um, your dissertation, in which case I think the dissertation takes over from your individual project. And if you're doing a four-year degree, then you do your individual project in your third year, and then during your fourth year, you have um, your dissertation. And apart from this, everything else is chosen from a bunch of your IP modules. And you can also choose some other modules, such as artificial intelligence, computer graphics, database systems, functional programming, image processing, interaction design, network systems, and a lot. So there's a lot of choice you can do there. And for your fourth year, you have your dissertation, which, like we said, counts for two modules, and if you choose whatever modules you want, there's no compulsory modules there. So, yeah, that's kind of like the options that you've got there. I'll put um, a list of the subjects you can choose from, and you can see what you fancy. But to be honest, they've got quite a good range. If you're into finance, there's a lot there. There's some stuff around music processing, imaging processing, graphics, security. So there's plenty to do, and especially in machine learning and AI. So moving on from that, um, in terms of study spaces at UCL, so there's plenty of spaces actually. UCL is one of the most like filled up universities. There are so many students everywhere, but you can find plenty of places to you know just go down and work, especially as an engineering student. So the options are the science library. We've got the main library, and so the main library is actually super super quiet. A lot of the English students and you know, the art students tend to go there, but. I liked it because it was a very quiet atmosphere. If I want to get away from everyone, just being like death silence, I'd usually go there. 
the science library is a bit more you know active and a bit more alive i'd say and i used to go there when i needed to have those long nights at library with you know a bunch of snacks and your coursework and just going through the night so it's pretty good for that um, there's also the anatomy building which is open during the day it's just a nice place to go out with a few friends there's labs which a lot of people didn't usually like because you know there's no windows around and it's just a bunch of computers but we spent a lot of time in labs because normally when other places were full labs would tend to be empty so we could have that spot um, there's the engineering building itself there is IUE which is like a five minute walk from UCL which has a ton of spaces to be honest I never actually went there um, the canteen is pretty big as well actually you can study there sometimes but yeah there's many options so you always find somewhere to study so yeah that's just some of the places around UCL if you want to work in terms of exams, so how your exams go depend a lot on the subjects that you pick. So in terms of the compulsory modules that you do, the first two years you'll probably have quite a few exams. So like I said, there were eight modules, you might find like six to eight of them might have um, exams. If there is a coursework element, they tend to be fairly small. So they tend to be like 25% to 30%. So that's your first two years. But as you go towards the last few years in your third and your fourth year, you can choose subjects which are purely coursework based. And yeah, so that can kind of change how many exams you had. So I had, for example, I had eight, seven exams in the first year, six in the second, then I had six in the third, and I literally had three or four in the final year. So it really just does depend on the subjects that you choose. So yeah, but in terms of exam season, one thing you should know is, so when I started UCL the first year or two, we did those in various locations around UCL. We literally didn't ever do it in UCL. They had to find you a bunch of different exam halls. Like, it could be located anywhere. It could be as far as Brixton. Some would be in Westminster. And that's because UCL is so big that they had to like hire all these venues and you had to go all around the place. But that's changed now. So now we do it in the Excel Center. So that's found like on the DLR line somewhere. You take um, a train from North Greenwich on the DLR to get there. And I think it's Custom House. But the problem with that was, is that you have a huge hall and you literally have 15 to 20 exams going on at the same time. So for those of you who've been to Excel Arena, you'll know like it's like a huge kind of center where you have these huge rooms with the whole events. And if you imagine the whole place is full of chairs and students and you have 15 to 20 exams at a time. Personally, I didn't really like that. And also an oversight might have been that's located near an airport. So every time I do my exams, every five minutes, I can just hear the sound of an airplane going over my head, which some people can find really off-putting. So, and also the location is quite far away. But after a while, you kind of get used to it, and it's kind of nice having all your exams in one area. So personally, I don't mind too much, but you know, if you don't like the idea of having tons of people around you in an exam, rather than one hall just for you guys, then you know, be prepared for it. Um, apart from that, well, the department is its own separate video, to be honest. Um, I'll do a video on this later. And to be honest, it's not the best organized department. Obviously there are you know, a few, few good lecturers here and there. But as a whole, like I said, student satisfaction does stem from the low, or it stems from the department not being the best. Um, some examples, you know, why I say this is they give you coursework marks really late. There were some modules I did in the first year I didn't even receive marks from until the second year after we had to push them really hard for it. Sometimes you get this with absolutely no feedback or coursework modules which are 100%, which to me blew my mind, doesn't make any sense. Some of the lectures are a bit rude and it can be hit and miss like sometimes you have courseworks which are released like I don't know five six weeks late and marks will return like two months three months later when we're kind of waiting for exams so I think these are kinds of things that people really care about what is it like when you actually get there what is it like with the department how flexible are they and this is one of the main points that really put me off UCL in terms of the computer science department despite all the good stuff it had this stuff was really really bad about them and if in hindsight I knew this would have been like, I would have actually rather gone to a different university. But you know, more on that one later, that's going to be a good video. Um, so yeah, it'd be a good way to end would be just talk about what was the best part of my time at UCL and you know, what were the worst parts. So just, you know, the balance of all out. So let's start with, you know, the good stuff. So I met some amazing people at my time there. A lot of the people in my university and to be fair, any university will be great, but yeah, at UCL, I met people from so many different backgrounds, from so many different countries, from so many different like, walks of life, and it gave me a new perspective. And in terms of studying the subject, people, there are some people who've done this, you know, ages before. In the UK, we don't really do much computer science before, but in other countries like Romania, for example, they've been studying this for years and years. So it's just nice to get, you know, a different perspective from people and learn from them sometimes. Um, UCL in particular does actually have really good career connections. So the careers fairs are pretty, pretty good. 
and you know for people who are looking for jobs it's quite nice to just be able to connect with the people and they have connections to some pretty big companies so whatever you're looking for you'll probably find out at career fair they also have good in connections with industry so like i said the projects that we did at ucl i was quite lucky to be able to work on a whole new app from scratch just with someone from industry and i think that's something you can't do at many universities and doing that actually really helped me quickly develop a lot of skills, not only my programming, but just the whole life cycle of like developing product from scratch. And being able to do that two times over the course of my whole, you know, um, course was brilliant, to be honest. Apart from that, um, yeah, it's all good for your CV as well. You realize when you start applying for jobs, you know, what experience do I have? Having worked with people in the industry, having done like projects for society, and some of the projects you've done for your own modules, they're really good and they can go in your CV. So that is one plus value still. So in terms of the worst part, like I said before, the department are very difficult to handle and we'll talk more about that. There are some really big mistakes that the department can often make, but they do not own up to it and they do not kind of admit their mistakes and this is usually to the detriment of the students. While we were there, we had to really fight a lot against a lot of what the department did and the committee that we had. And a lot of the students on that committee did a really good job to change things over the few years. So it is slowly changing over time. And some, to be honest, it's like any university, to be honest, but some of the courses are really, really bad. Like, I would not go to a single lecture of them. And other courses are great. I, I want to go to every single lecture. So just pick and choose what you think is the best. But yeah, apart from that, I hope that gives you a better idea of what it's like to study at UCL. And yeah, I'd just like to close by saying there'll be a lot more videos, you know, how to get an internship in London, how to get internships, you know, any job, any area looking in finance and technology and the kinds of things you want to do. Because the reason I made this video was I found there's a lot of things that people ask me all the time. And to be honest, I always find myself saying the same thing. And if I had to end on one note, and this is specifically for people looking to study computer science, it doesn't matter what university. One thing I always found is people in the first year tend to always underestimate themselves and overestimate everyone around them. They think that I have no idea what I'm doing and look at all these people around me who are so good at computer science and can do this and can do that. And all I would say is in your first few weeks, in your first year, take it easy, take care of your own pace, figure out what you want to learn. If you want to learn Python, go on your own, learn Python, do it as a programming language. Like eventually when you pick it up, this stuff isn't very difficult. It's just when you tell yourself in your head that I can't do this and other people are doing it, or you just kind of get bogged down in like a negative place in your head, don't do that because everyone's thinking the same thing, but just no one tends to talk about it much. So my first advice to everyone is always just, you know, Take it slow, take your own pace. If you're feeling overwhelmed, you know, make a note, I want to learn some Python, I want to learn some web development, and just find tutorials. And literally just for the first year, you're free. Just go teach yourself, and bit by bit, you will pick up, um, you know, different qualities, different stuff, and you will build yourself into a better computer scientist. There's no rush for where you end. You all start in different places, you all end in different places. So just, if you're taking a journey, just take it nice and slow, to be honest. And I'll do a whole separate video on like the mistakes I think that I made as a first year computer scientist and things I wish I could have known earlier that I found that you know further down the line and hopefully those will come in handy for you. But yeah, I hope this video was useful for you and if you have any other questions, you can ask me in the comments below, you can ask me, you can find me um, by email which I'll post down and yeah, hope you have a good week and look forward to seeing you in the next video.